Hello everyone, and welcome back to the AI Tools Research Channel. I'm Zeb Potty, your host. In this video, we'll explain how large language models work. We are going to explain what is a large language model, or LLM. We will describe how it works, like what happens inside the neural network, and how it creates new content. And, we are going to give examples of how businesses are using LLMs. So let's start with, what is a large language model? A large language model is an instance of something else called a foundation model. Foundation models are pre-trained on large amounts of unlabeled and self-supervised data, meaning the model learns from patterns in the data, in a way that produces generalizable and adaptable new content. Large language models are trained on large data sets of text, such as books, articles, research papers, websites, social media posts, and all other human and machine-to-human -human conversations. And when we say large, these models can be terabytes and even petabytes in size and trained on mountains of text data. We are talking about nearly all the data humans have collected over the centuries. And how many gigabytes are in a petabyte? Well, it's about 1 million gigabytes. That's a lot of text. And LLMs are also among the biggest models when it comes to parameter count. A parameter is a value the model can change independently as it learns. And the more parameters a model has, the more complex and powerful it can be. Note that we mentioned the term text LLMs, which means that text-based large language models are instances of foundation models specifically trained to understand and work on text and text-like things. This is stuff like essays, stories, books, novels, poems, and also software programs and code. GPT-3, for example, is pre-trained on a corpus of approximately 45 terabytes of data, and it uses 175 billion machine learning parameters, and GPT-4 has trillions of parameters. So, how do they actually work? What happens inside the black box of these neural networks? Well, we can think of LLM as a result of three things. One, data. This is everything that is there on books, websites, social media platforms, research papers, etc. Two, architecture. And three, training on the data or learning from the data using the architecture. Those three things are really the components of an LLM. As for the architecture, this is the artificial neural network architecture. And for text, this is called a transformer. For example, GPT, which stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, is a large language model that can generate human-like text. The transformer architecture enables the model to handle sequences of data, like sentences or lines of code. So what exactly is GPT and transformer? Let's examine the basic architecture. Imagine you have a big box of Lego bricks. Each brick is different, with its own size, shape, and color. Now, let's say you want to build a model of a house or a spaceship. To do this, you need to find the right bricks of appropriate shapes, sizes, and color, and put them together in the right way to build your model. The GPT is like a super smart assistant trained using the transformer architecture to help you build models with your Lego bricks. Now imagine instead of bricks, we have words and sentences. Our super smart assistant, who has been trained on understanding how words fit together to make sentences that make sense, will generate new text and sentences for you. Here's how this expert helps. Listening carefully. First, it listens very carefully to each word you say or write, just like paying attention to each Lego brick. Remembering everything. It remembers not just the word, but also where it was in the sentence and what other words were around it. This is like remembering where each Lego brick goes in your model. Making connections. It thinks about how all the words or bricks are connected. It understands that some words are more important and need to be placed in the center, some at the beginning, and what needs to be placed at the end. Just like some Lego bricks are key to holding your model together, creating new sentences. Finally, it uses what it knows to help you create new sentences that make sense, just like helping you build new models with your Lego bricks. So, the transformer is like a super helper for building things with words, making sure everything fits together just right to make sense and be interesting. It builds new text in form of sentences that make sense. Now, let's expand this further. 
We know that transformers are designed to understand the context of each word in a sentence by considering it in relation to every other word. This allows the model to build a comprehensive understanding of the sentence structure in the right sequence and the meaning of the words within it. Since the transformer-based model is trained on massive amounts of data, during training, the model learns to predict the next word in a sentence. For example, if the sentence is, the grass is a, uh, it starts off with a random guess, the grass is cat. But with each iteration, the model adjusts its internal parameters to reduce the difference between its predictions and the actual outcomes. And the model keeps doing this, gradually improving its word predictions until it can reliably generate coherent, correct sentences in natural human language we use. It will eventually forget about cat and it can figure out the grass is green. The model can also be fine-tuned on a smaller, more specific data set. What this means is that the model refines its understanding to be able to perform this specific task more accurately for various domains that have specific vocabulary. Fine-tuning is what allows a general language model to become an expert at a specific task. Now you must be curious as to what is actually happening inside the transformer neural network. So let's delve into that. The inside of a transformer neural network consists of the following. It has an encoder. It has a decoder. There are layers of neurons and a tension mechanism. So the core transformer architecture consists of an encoder and a decoder but these are made up of multiple identical encoder and decoder layers stacked on top of each other. Specifically, the encoder is made up of n number of identical encoder layers stacked together. The decoder is made up of n number of identical decoder layers stacked together. Each encoder layer has two sublayers, a multi-head self-attention layer and a position-wise feed-forward layer. Each decoder layer has three sublayers, a masked multi-head self-attention layer, an encoder-decoder multi-head attention layer, and a position-wise feed-forward layer. So there is a single encoder and a single decoder, each made up of unstacked layers. The layers contain the self-attention and feed-forward sublayers that actually perform the transformations. The outputs of each sublayer are normalized and fed into the next encoder-decoder layer in the stack. So the encoder and decoder layers work together sequentially rather than having separate encoders and decoders for each layer. In summary, there is one encoder passing information through n encoder layers and one decoder passing information through n decoder layers in a transformer architecture. All right, let's stick with our Lego analogy to explain these parts of the transformer architecture further. First, the encoder. Think of the encoder as a team of experts who examine each Lego brick you have, or each word in our case, and writes down detailed notes about it. They look at the color, shape, and how it might fit with other bricks. In the case of words, they're looking at the meaning of each word and how it fits in the sentence. Now the decoder. The decoder is like another team of experts who take the notes from the first team and starts building something new. They use the information about each Lego brick, or word, to decide how to put them together. For sentences, they take the meanings and connections of words and start creating a new sentence that makes sense. Okay, so what about layers? Imagine you're building a big Lego model, like a castle. You don't just throw all the bricks together, you build it layer by layer. Each layer makes the castle stronger and adds more detail. In the transformer, layers work the same way, each layer adds more understanding and refinement to how the words are put together. The more layers you have, the more complex and detailed your word castle can be. And finally, the attention mechanism. This is a special tool in your Lego kit. It's like a magnifying glass that helps the encoder and decoder focus on the most important parts of the sentence. For instance, if you're building a Lego castle, the attention mechanism would help you focus on the most important bricks that need to be placed perfectly. In our case of words and sentences, the attention mechanism. It helps the transformer focus on the most important words that affect the meaning the most. So, to encapsulate it all together, the encoder examines and understands each word. 
The decoder uses that understanding to make new sentences. Layers add depth and complexity to this process. The attention mechanism helps focus on the most important parts of the sentence. This teamwork in the transformer architecture helps in understanding and generating language, just like a team of Lego builders working together to build something amazing. But wait, we're not done yet. How does all this fit in with artificial neurons and weights? How does the information traverse through the layers of neurons and pass on to the following layers based on the influence exerted by weights on the neurons? To explain this mechanism of artificial neurons and influence of weights on them, let's stick to our Lego analogy. Let's take artificial neurons first. Think of artificial neurons as the tiny workers inside each Lego brick. In real Lego, these don't exist. But imagine if inside every brick there were tiny workers who could decide how that brick connects with others. In the transformer model, artificial neurons are like these workers. They take in information, like words in a sentence, and make decisions about it, like how the word should be used or understood. Now let's bring in the concept of weights. This is the secret sauce in a LLM for all practical purposes. Weights are like instructions given to these tiny workers in each Lego brick. They tell the workers how important their brick is compared to others. For example, in a sentence, some words are more important for understanding the meaning than others. Weights help the artificial neurons, the workers, know which words or bricks are more important. When you train a transformer model, you're essentially teaching it how to adjust these weights so it gets better at deciding which words are key to understanding the meaning. So, let's look at the whole picture. When you use the transformer model, or our Lego building process, the artificial neurons, or the tiny workers in the bricks, are constantly busy. They're looking at the words, understanding them, and using the weights, which is instructions, to decide how to connect these words into meaningful sentences. As you train the model more and more, like practicing building more Lego models. The weights get adjusted. This means the model gets better and better at understanding which words are important and how they should fit together. The encoder, decoder, layers, and attention mechanism all rely on these artificial neurons and weights to work. They are the basic building blocks, just like our imaginary workers in each Lego brick, helping to build the final structure, coherent sentence, or a paragraph. So, artificial neurons and weights are fundamental to how the transformer model processes and understands language, helping it to build meaningful sentences from words, much like how our imaginary workers in Lego bricks would help us build amazing structures. Weights and neurons in one layer decide which neuron in the next layer will be engaged. This is an important aspect of how transformers and other neural networks works. Let's clarify this a bit more using a simplified explanation. In a neural network, each layer is made up of artificial neurons. These neurons process information passed to them and then pass their output to the next layer. The weights play a crucial role in this process. Here's how the complete process and flow works in the context of large language models. Imagine that each neuron in a layer is like a tiny program that receives lots of messages in form of data. These messages come from the neurons in the previous layer, and this is information passing process. Each message, data point, received has a certain importance or relevance. The weights act like a filter, deciding how important each message is. A higher weight means the message is more important and should be given more attention. So the weights, in a sense, are importance filters. The next step is deciding which neurons to send the message to in the following layer. The neuron processes these messages, taking into account their importance, that is, weights, and then makes a decision. This decision is like a summary or a response based on all the messages it received. This decision or response is then passed on to the neurons in the next layer. And again, the importance of this message for each neuron in the next layer will be determined by the weights. This is how the decision passing process works. This process happens layer by layer. Each layer's output becomes the input for the next layer, with weights guiding the importance and influence of the information being passed along. So, 
weights in neurons of one layer help determine which neurons in the next layer will be most influenced and how they will react. This cascading effect of decision-making and passing information, filtered and guided by weights, is fundamental to how neural networks process and learn from data. In conclusion, it should be noted that the concept of foundation models extends beyond just natural language processing. The concept also encompasses models trained on various types of non-text data, such as images, audio, and video. Collectively, text, images, audio, and video foundation models are called multimodal foundation models. LLMs are beginning to transform the entire workforce landscape. Individuals and businesses are coming up with fascinating new applications. For example, in customer service applications, businesses are using LLMs to create intelligent chatbots that can handle a variety of customer queries, freeing up human agents for more complex issues. Content creators are using them for both short and long-form text. They are being used to generate articles, storybooks, novels, emails, social media posts, movie scripts, YouTube video scripts, etc. The multimodal LLMs are being used to generate images, audio, music, animations, and videos. LLMs are even contributing towards software development. They can generate and review software code. As large language models continue to evolve, we're bound to discover more innovative applications in the future. Don't be surprised you see LLMs being used in self-driven automobiles, home appliances like refrigerators, ovens, washing machines, and general home automation. And that's just scratching the surface. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And don't forget the like button.